All right, so now that we have an understanding of the engine and tools, we're gonna start with understanding game modes. Do you guys remember where the game modes are declared? That's right, the levels.txt file that's inside of the data folder of the engine. So before we get into opening that file, there's a main tool that we'll use to edit code, and that tool is Sublime Text. And it's stored in your main tools folder that's located at the following path, you guys should have an idea about this already in your user folder, DBH game class, main tools. Remember that Sublime Text is the tool that will be our integrated development environment or IDE for short. So let's go into that folder and open up the sublime underscore text.exe file. Now that this application is open, we have the option to open the whole folder and use this particular tool to support the engine folder. And to do this, let's go to the toolbar at the top of the app and click on File, and then click on Open Folder. Now we need to find the main OpenBOR folder we downloaded, which should be located where? All right, so the DBH Game Class, DBH Course, and Main OpenBOR. All right, so once we've found this folder, let's click on Select Folder at the bottom right to see a window with a view of the whole folder on the left side of the app and a black area on the right. The left area is called the sidebar. This is where all files and folders are displayed. You can use this area to find files easily. The right area is called the editing area. So all edits happen in this area and all files will be open in this area. The contents of each file are linked to the tabs. So if you have multiple files open in the editing area, you can switch files by clicking on the corresponding tab. If you want to give yourself more room on either side of the application, you can hover over the divider, click and drag to your desired size. So now that we have this understanding, let's now open up the levels.txt file. So we know that the levels.txt file is in the data folder, which is inside of the build folder, because why? Yes, the build folder is the engine folder. So we need to navigate to this file using the sidebar. Right now we see main dash open BOR, build and game assets folders. We want to open the build folder so we can get to the data folder. In order to navigate inside the build folder, just click on the arrow that's on the left of build. Now, as you can see, two things happen. You're now able to see what's inside and also the arrow is pointed downward. The position of the arrow signifies that the folder is now open and you're able to see what's inside. But the levels.txt file is inside of the data folder. Is the data folder open? As you can see, no it's not, because you don't see any of its contents and the arrow is pointed to the right, which signifies it being closed. So let's open it up. Click on the arrow and now you see the contents and the arrow is pointed downward. If you look at the contents of this folder, you should be able to now see the file levels.txt directly inside of the data folder. So let's go ahead and open this up by double clicking the file. When you open up this file, you should have also noticed something. There are numbers to the left of the code starting at the number one at the top. That then increments or gets larger as it counts downward. These numbers are called line numbers. So think of it like college rule paper. This paper has horizontal sections that are separated by blue lines. These sections are called rows or lines. So same thing with code. Although these blue lines are invisible, the file is separated into lines, and the higher the number of lines are in a file, the longer the file is. There's only so much space that you can code in a line without it being hard to read. Hence why people try to separate their code into smaller chunks using more lines. Again, this will come more apparent when we advance in the course. One more important note to remember is that we use these numbers to know what line of the code we're on. That way we can find things easier. So let's keep this in mind. All right, let's go ahead and look at this code. So looking at lines one through nine, it shows you the syntax of how to run code. What is syntax you ask? Syntax is basically the rules of how the code should be formatted so that the compiler and the engine know what you're talking about. For instance, let's think of this in the English language. If someone was sending you a letter and you were reading it, how would one know that you were reading a question in the letter? 
there would be a question mark at the end of the sentence, right? This would signify that the sentence was actually a question. This is what syntax is, in a nutshell, using different formatting cues so that the engine and the compiler know what the commands are. All right, so back to looking at lines one through nine. Let's also notice the pound signs or hashtags, uh, it's speaking in kids language, that are on the far left of the lines of code. This means that the text written after those won't be considered code. It will be hidden from the compiler and won't be run. This is called commenting out or hiding the code from the compiler, but visible in the code. This is how people make notes and instructions for themselves or other developers on the team. This is just another form of communication across the team. All right, so back to the syntax. One thing to note about commands, each command works like a terminal or git bash command. The first word is the actual command. Any words after that are considered attributes or parameters. This is information that the command needs so that it can run properly. We see some commands listed here. There's set, file, next, and scene. So let's go ahead and talk about what these commands are. Set is the command that creates the actual game mode by giving it a name. The name given to it is the parameter or attribute. To see an example of this used, let's look at both lines 13 and 22. At line 13, this set or game mode's name is grouping. You remember seeing this when we loaded the game engine, right? I mean, this is simple enough. Let's look at line 22. At line 22, this set or game mode's name is water underscore three underscore levels. Do you remember seeing any underscores when you were looking at the engine? I believe you saw spaces, right? That means in code form, the underscores represent spaces. Now that we have a better understanding of this command, let's move to the next commands. So file, next, and scenes are used underneath the set command to signify being a part of that set or game mode. To put them under another game mode, you simply have to put them under another set command. This will break off the first command and start a new game mode. File is the command that loads a stage or game level. Do you remember where your code for your levels are located? That's right, in the data levels folder. The parameter and attribute for the file command is a path to that stage or level file that you want loaded. Let's look at line 15, for example. As we can see, it runs the file command that then points to data levels example onetxt file. That means this will run the example onetxt code as a level in this set or game mode. The set is being run under is the grouping set. Let's look at lines 23 through 25. Here we see three different commands to three different levels. What happens here is these levels are run consecutively after completion of the level before it. So it starts with water.txt, then once you complete this level, you then go to water2.txt, etc. Now with this setup, you expect to replenish your health before going to the next level, right? In the case of lines 22 through 25 though, this actually does not happen. These are basically seen as three parts of one stage. So three levels, but the stage hasn't been completed yet and you haven't replenished your health. There's a command that actually does this and resets everything for you and takes you to the next stage per se. Next is that command. And next is the command that closes out the stage and replenishes your health and energy. It shows a stage complete screen and tallies up your points in that stage. Scene is the command that loads a cutscene file. Do you remember where your code is for the cutscenes? Yes, they are located in the data scenes folder. The parameter slash attribute for the scene command is a path to the cutscene file that you want loaded. Let's go ahead and look at the example of this at line 19. So there's a cutscene called ending.txt that gets loaded after the end of the stage or the next command that's ran in line 18. The cutscene is the ending screen and animation. So now that we have more understanding of how this works, let's do one quick change to make sure that it all sinks in. We want to change the name of the grouping game mode. Let's change it to DBH course test instead. So if we're changing the name of a game mode, that means we're changing the parameter and attribute of one of these set commands. 
Is there a set command here already that has a parameter of grouping anywhere? That's right, that's at line 13. So we want to change this parameter to dbh course test. Remember now that we can't use spaces, right? So let's use line 22 as an example of how to write that parameter. Spaces are signified by underscores. So here's what you would change the word grouping to. So it'd be dbh underscore course underscore test, which means line 13 will now be changed to set space dbh underscore course underscore test. So you made a change to this file, but before we save, let's look at something to keep in mind. Do you notice that the tab above has a circle to the right of it instead of an X? That means that you changed the file and it needs to be saved to take effect. There are two ways to save the file, either using hotkey, which is a keyboard shortcut, or using the application toolbar. The shortcut is basically holding the control key and hitting the S key. If you'd rather use the toolbar, you can just go ahead to file and then save. Both of these do the same thing though, and you'll notice that the circle goes away in the tab and is now an X. So now your changes are saved now. So let's see our change in action. Let's open up the game engine and go to the game mode screen. You should now see DBH Course Test as the game mode name. You can play through the game mode if you want to. Once you're done, we'll move on to learning about models and objects. We hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this, and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just want to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin, appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.